Welcome, welcome to another program. This week we want to uh, talk about uh, U.S.-China trade war and the future of One Belt, One Road initiative. Uh, you know that uh, President Trump, since 2017, when he started to, to take the office, he has implemented uh, additional taxes to Chinese goods, which has increased the prices uh, in U.S. and abroad too. Uh, but this has a major effect on Chinese um, economy because um, the contribution of U.S. business to Chinese GDP is 4%, whereas uh, the Chinese business to U.S. Uh, GDP is 0.5%. Therefore, we can only conclude that here uh, China has less room compared to U.S. economy uh, to compensate this 4% GDP, which is a great one, by the way, I have to say. Uh, the trade deficiency between US and China is around 400 billion, which is great in numbers. So uh, that's why uh, there is a great pressure from US. And since 2017, if any of you has been considering that it's only President Trump's um, idea to pressure or hardly pressure on China, it is wrong. Uh, before that, even President Obama had started to negotiate the Devaluation of Chinese currency, which we call it yuan, and also the uh, the barrier against the U.S. goods, uh, the free uh, uh, entrance of the U.S. goods into the Chinese market. They have been talking about this uh, intensively with the higher uh, uh, bureaucrats of China, but it has not been uh, solved. Trump, or President Trump, let's say, had a different idea. He has a very uh, unique and uh, direct uh, intervention to the problems. At first, he slammed uh, uh, on the Chinese economy with uh, taxes, and now he said, this is what I am. And then China showed his reaction to uh, Donald Trump. Now he thought they will sit down, but it is not that easy. And we now we will talk about this and how it's going to evolve in future. So let's start with. <music> Now, as I said, uh, China, uh, the U.S. business on China has a 4% GDP, whereas the uh, U.S. Uh, sorry, China Chinese economy uh, contribution to U.S. GDP is 0.5%, uh, and the trade deficiency is around 400 billions. Now, this is too high for the uh, U.S. Uh, and not only President Trump, but before him, uh, like uh, Obama administration. Everybody was uh, against this approach. Uh, imagine that you are a company and you are trading with another company. You sell goods and you buy goods from each other. And let's say you have 100 million of uh, trade or selling to other company, but you are buying 300 from them. Is it good on your company? It is not. Uh, because one of the reasons why it is not for US is not only trade deficiency and other trade, the U.S. economy only sells 15% of its product abroad, whereas China has been selling appro approximately half of it, which means that uh, U.S. economy can live without Chinese contribution, but for U uh, Chinese economy it is hard to say that. That's why uh, Donald Trump had uh, chosen the way to increase the taxes, although it will increase the prices domestically within the U.S. But he thinks uh, he, uh, U.S. has the room to, uh, to take this hit uh, into stomach, but China will find it hard to uh, swallow it. And in that regard, he is right. Now we are seeing that although China is trying to accommodate some of uh, President Trump's uh, desires or willing, uh, China cannot do this all because if China is going to, let's say, agree that the US uh, products will be free uh, entrance to Chinese markets, uh, how they are going to deal with their uh, products? In quality, it's not good. In price, there will be some questions. So, how they are going to compete with the US products? They can't. So, this is going to be bad for the economy. If the economy is bad, it's going to be bad for the politics. And China sees this as a direct threat to not only to their economy, but to their sovereignty. So, from a perspective of China, this is the story. We have to all understand that it is not only economy, it's the sovereignty of the country. 
like in Hong Kong people might uh, protest the economic uh, downturn uh, or the slow downturn in Ch uh, in China uh, because of these kind of things. Not only the US in you know, goods you have to think, the other countries goods also will be uh, also there will be free entrance to uh, China. So it will be really really hard for the Chinese goods to compete with other goods in China. That's why China doesn't want this. China wants uh, limited barrier or limited sorry uh, entrance of uh, foreign uh, goods to country so that they can uh, increase their uh, uh, I would say capacity the thing that China also avoids and they don't want because of the political corruption I have to say that is the distribution of the income the distribution of income is very bad for the 90 percent of the people or there or 95 percent a very limited number of people have the great distribution of income and the majority is taking only uh, very limited distribution of income. That's why people hadn't uh, or hasn't the ability to buy uh, the goods that they needed or the things that they might need it. And that's what also scares the Chinese uh, political elites. And that's why they see it as a direct threat to their sovereignty too. That's why in the short term, we do not project that there will be, a, I will say, a resolution between US and China in terms of trade there might be some I would say maneuvers or they might there might be some accommodations that might be introduced to these uh, war or trade uh, which will favor US such as increasing the limits of the I will say the agricultural uh, products or other things but only limited they cannot be free and uh, it seems that Donald Trump wants this uh, to be to be dealt with right now because it's only increasing. It cannot be even controlled at this moment. That's why uh, we do not believe that in the short term there will be a resolution between these two giants, and it will continue to affect the global markets and the global economy too. So the developing countries also will find it hard to adjust themselves. But when it comes to one road, one one belt, one road initiative projects, it's a, uh, China will only increase the efficiency or increase the uh, expenses on these projects because once they are losing the main market, which is U.S., they have to find other markets to sell their products. So in order to uh, uh, accomplish this, they have to uh, get all the links uh, from Chinese land mainland to those markets over there not only to sell the things but also to buy for the uh, to, buy, to buy the raw materials from let's say africa or from middle east central asia and europe so they have to uh, finish all these projects as soon as they can that's why 70 billion uh, project budget including the four, 400 billion I will say the loan package for those countries are very juicy for the politician or elites, political elites in those countries like Pakistan, Malaysia, uh, Bahrain or Bhutan uh, and uh, uh, other things, other countries. But some countries like maybe India might be a little bit against this or Malaysia might be against this because they are afraid of the uh, we call it debt trap. And it is indeed the case because China, like US has done previously, will give this money to them and will tell them what to do, what not to do politically later on. We have the, seen this uh, with uh, the, the foreign aid uh, previously for the countries, like Truman aid, let's say. Truman aid uh, has, given, uh, has given all these things, but then they started to, um, I would say, intervene with the uh, politics, within the domestic politics especially, which causes uh, a lot of problems uh, later on. So uh, all the countries and the people within those countries are also should be cautious about these things. But uh, as I said, uh, China is only going to increase the, uh, the, the expenses for these projects because they need to uh, reach or access these markets as soon as possible. And uh, they have, therefore, they have to compete with the time. They know it. That's why they are going to only pour, uh, pour uh, money to do these projects and it will take place more and more that's what our expectation or forecast suggests for a short term future uh, but for the f uh, short term also future we do not believe that there will be a resolution or a main resolution 
between China and uh, US, although despite the fact that September, October, two leaders might also come together to discuss all these uh, possible uh, resolutions, we do not believe that there will be a main uh, resolution. Uh, the other issue also about uh, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, which uh, US is strongly uh, asking China to follow the rules, international rules, which China says they are, but actually they are not. Uh, we will see how this is also going to develop and uh, emerge in the future. So if you like this uh, video, there's a like button uh, down the screen, please uh, press it and please uh, subscribe yourself to our channel so you are going to uh, receive all our uh, videos and watch them first once we publish a new one. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day. Bye.